Hey team, in this quick training, I'm going to give you the blueprint for re new patient reactivations 2.0 strategy. So I'm Dr. Joshua Wagner with Patient Mastery where we help amazing chiropractors become the go-to DC, have your best collections ever with less time in practice, more time off without doing anything, feeling like a salesperson to patients or having to switch your techniques, incorporate new services or abandon your philosophy. So let's talk about new patient reactivations. Most likely you're experiencing throughout your career um, hundreds to thousands of past patient files of patients who are still living in your community. They haven't moved, they haven't died, they haven't found a new chiropractor. Thousands of files and probably wondering how come more don't come back to me when they feel an issue that they know I can help with or aren't staying on as some type of maintenance or wellness type of protocol which you probably use yourself, meaning you probably get adjusted by a local colleague, local chiropractor, and you're wondering, you're banging your head against the wall. I've been in practice 10, 15, 25 years. Why isn't my practice more filled up? I'm gonna share some of those reasons and I'm gonna share what you need to do to start getting more in. Um, definitely take notes on this. I'm gonna outline a bunch, a whole blueprint. And let's look at the four best types of new patients. Oftentimes we think of, oh, the best patient is a referral. That's a good patient, it's not the best. Then we think of what's another deeper, level deeper. The best patient is a referral from a medical doctor or another healthcare provider, someone with status, and the people are gonna do whatever they say. So that's even better than a patient referral. The best patient though, is the new patient who was already your patient in the past, coming back. They already know you, already trust you, know your fees or ready for whatever your updated fees are. They want you. The number one best patient, new patient, is a reactivated past patient. And not a reactivated, <clears throat> come for a spinal check, one or two visits and then they're gone. That's not a great uh, new patient for your practice and business or making a difference in their life. A reactivated past patient who's got a new condition that they want you to help solve, fix, so they can get back to their life. That's what we're gonna focus on today. So the number one premise, why this is so important, is because if you think you need 30, 40 plus new, brand new patients every single month to reach your goals or just stay at your goals, you're most likely not capitalizing on having all, not all, you're never gonna get all of them, but you're not capitalizing on all of the missing reactivated past patients as new patients. And this is one of those stat, uh, categories and stats that is the defining factor of are you the go-to chiropractor or not? Are people doing one bout with you and then realizing huh, chiropractic wasn't for me or when I do want chiropractic, I'm gonna go to someone else? So write this down. The number one reason is that why that happens, did you make the patient wrong when they discontinued seeing you? Whether they came to the end of their initial plan relationship, agreement, they got better or not, did you make them wrong that they didn't want to continue on for maintenance or wellness? Now, most likely if you've done any type of coaching or practice management in chiropractic, you know, you've been beaten into your head to beat into your patient's head that they need to keep coming every week or every month for the rest of their life, no matter what they feel like, because this is good for them. And often with that mentality, only a small percentage come to that realization as a patient, even if they love you, even if they got great results, um, think about how long it came for you, it took for you to come to that realization, probably four years of grad school, and then a bunch of DE seminars and all this other fist pumping, and like, that's how you came to that understanding. And you're asking a patient to come to that understanding in a month, three months, six months, a year? It's not even, it's not even feasible. So just first understand that you've been sold and fed a wrong bill of goods that doesn't apply to how real people think, real people meaning not chiropractors. And it worked in the insurance days, 80s, 90s, early 2000s, because patients didn't really have to pay. So if you just said, eh, keep coming every two weeks, we'll waive the copay, you know, or you owe 10 bucks, um, that's easy. That's not practice today. So when you're interacting with humans and not chiro students or other chiropractors, which is often how practice management teaches chiropractors, the game changes. People don't want to pay for wellness, prevention, or maintenance. So if that's your reactivation strategy, it makes sense that you're banging your head against the wall. So what are we going to do? We're going to change the messaging. Before we go into changing the messaging, 
you've got to understand if you're getting more reactive beta patients, you will hit your collections goal, even without more new marketing or all of that and just how much you're missing. If you're making patients wrong in any way, shape or form for not continuing with you after their initial phase of care, you're completely jeopardizing reactivations and referrals from past patients. Uh, so those two understandings, just look at where those may be showing up in your practice. Your reactivations is premised on, you know, getting your spinal checked, wellness, maintenance, or you know patients are feeling like they didn't do what they were supposed to do. If they ever get that feeling, the next time they need a chiropractor, they're going to your colleague, not you, because they don't want to show up and feel like, ugh, you know, I know I was supposed to keep coming every week or every month and I didn't do that, but can you help me with this? They don't want to have that conversation. And then they also don't want to have the conversation of, yeah, thank you for helping me, but like, I'm good for now. I don't want to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not ready for once a week chiro for the rest of my life. That's very common in our profession. So make sure you're not doing those two. When you should do reactivation campaigns, two to four times a year. So whether you wanna do it once every six months or quarterly as the seasons change, great times to do it. So you know, think of school calendar quarterly, uh, except don't do it right before the end of year holidays. People are, people are way too um, consumed and busy with travel and holidays. Do it right in the beginning of the year when people are getting back to their schedule. Uh, you know, same with uh, end of summer. Like, don't do it in August. Do it right when kids come back to school and people are getting back into, okay, what do I need to get scheduled back in my life? So you can do it once a quarter or twice a year or three times. Uh, I wouldn't do it more than that. Uh, who's it going out to? Reactivations, formula, and strategy. Anyone who's been a patient in your practice who's not currently on the books, like having active care, within the last nine months, 12 months maximum. Now you may be a practitioner 25 years in practice and have 14,000 files of inactivated, inactive patients from one to 24 years ago. The amount of effort, energy, and time or money it will cost to reach out to them for the return is so small that let's just save you and your staff a bunch of energy and just focus on inactive patients over the past nine to 12 months max, okay? So right there, just saving a bunch of wasted um, output from your team. How to do it. Email, practically free. Text, practically free. Uh, physical letter, not free. That's why you don't wanna be sending hundreds and thousands to people from years ago. It's gonna fall on deaf ears. They probably don't even live there anymore. Uh, but physical mailer, so you're gonna have multiple pronged approach. They're gonna, you know, most people aren't gonna pick up a phone call. Most people aren't gonna read the email, but they'll see the email in the inbox. Most people are gonna see the letter, open the letter. Most people are gonna see the text. And outside of printing and mailing a letter, all of those are very, very simple because you do it once and it goes out to everyone. Now, phone calls. Doctor, once a quarter, you should be looking at all of your inactives and going down the list that your CAs create for you and looking, who did I have the best connection with? Who was I closest with? Who did I love? But like, yeah, where have they been? give them the personal phone call, leave a voicemail, just seeing how they're doing, checking in, letting them know that you're checking in, hoping they're doing well, not, hey, it's time for your wellness check, it's time for to get your spine checked, or you know, we're doing a promotion, nothing like that. Other people, other good patients, but maybe you weren't as close with as the doctor, you can have the CA call, but we all know having your CAs, at, you know, they probably have to do this once a month or, or in some practices or quarter, calling everyone, it's a drain. No one likes calls out of the blue from someone they don't love. So that's what I'm saying. Only call the people that you, the doctor, uh, really had a great connection with or your team had a great connection with. And you, know, you making 20 calls once a quarter isn't, isn't such a big deal. Uh, it will pay dividends. Okay, got that. Um, now, the messaging. This is the most important part. So there's multiple aspects. First, 2.0, reactivations 2.0. It's two, There's two aspects of this. First, you're not just aiming and goaling for past inactive patients to come back with a new condition or come back because they want care. That's one aspect. The other is eliciting referrals. So with the mailer, you're gonna send gift certificates 
for a complimentary consult and a discounted exam that they can share with someone they care about because you have so many people in your community who love you, who see you as their chiropractor, but aren't at the level of wanting your care unless they have a problem. So when they get correspondence from you, they're happy to see it. When, they, when something happens, you're gonna be the first one they call, but they're just not in the market right now to return for chiropractic care because that's their level of understanding. That's okay. When they get gifted two gift certificates to share with others, and there's lots of specifics around those gift certificates, this is not for free care, nothing illegal, no bait and switch, none of that BS, they're more likely to give it. Hey, they're not, they don't need care, but maybe a family member, maybe a coworker, maybe a good friend has been complaining about something or they just know someone's suffering. So the reactivation formula and strategy 2.0 is you are eliciting by you gifting, you are going to get referrals from this. So that's the first part. Second, and that could be through email, through physical, uh, physical mail, and the texts and the calls even alluding and mentioning, did you receive the gift we sent you? Everyone loves a gift. Next, the messaging. If you and your team are banging your head against the wall trying to get people in for a spinal check, kind of like dentistry will send the postcards about, hey, it's time for your cleaning, that makes sense. You know why? Because 99.9% .9 of society agrees and believes that dental cleanings, when everything feels fine, is smart, it saves money in the long run, and it prevents bad stuff from happening. That's why it works, that's why they do it. But the leaders in our profession try to take things from other profession professions and think it'll work here and don't realize that it's completely different. Why? Because 1% of the human population believes chiropractic, when you feel absolutely fine, is good to take advantage of to save money in the long run, prevent things from happening, and overall make you better. It's the opposite of the general public for dentistry, okay? So when you send the same messaging as dentistry, hey, it's time for your spinal check, or it's time for wellness, or you know, like whatever, you know, the, the goofy jargon that you're taught to say to, to, to the general public, um, no wonder it feels like you're banging a head against the wall. You know the whole quote, if they knew what we knew, we, they'd do what we do? Well, it's never gonna happen, so stop trying it. So instead of promoting the spinal check, the wellness, the this is just good for you, the selling the invisible, focus on the conditions, same conditions that draw new patients to you because 99% of your new patients aren't looking for wellness, aren't asymptomatic, they have a legitimate concern, they want help with getting back to their life, the same messaging goes to your inactive patients because they're human and in today's society with all the stress, all the electronics crushing our posture and crushing our, our you know, physical well-being, just because someone had a great success with you three months ago, six months ago, nine months ago, doesn't mean they're not dealing with some other issue, some residual issue, like some new issue and reminding them that's what you're here for. Reminding them, what are the six, eight, 10 most common conditions you help with? Are you experiencing any of them now? As we go into this new season, now we're going to summer and now you wanna be more bike riding, water skiing, getting to the beach, jumping in the pool. Like, are you gonna able to get back to your life with what you're dealing with? And if you're good, awesome, we love you. Do you know anyone else who's suffering needlessly, doesn't wanna be on chronic medication, hasn't found a solution, this is what we help with. You see the difference? So first part of 2.0, you're getting referrals, not just hoping for reactivations. The second part is you're not trying to sell the invisible. You're not trying to get the 1% of the population. You're trying to get the 60% of the population who most likely has some type of pain, ailment, condition, and they just didn't realize, oh, you know what? I should go back to Dr. So-and-so, like actually, they helped me with this thing, they could probably help me with this thing. Oh, and I saw it's listed as one of the conditions. Yep, call. See how different it is than the, again, banging your head against the wall, old school chiropractic mumbo jumbo jargon of what worked when patients didn't have to pay does not work when patients do have to pay. So I just gave you, I have notes, when to do it, who to send it to, who sends it from your office, what formats to send it in, like all the different mediums, four of them. Um, and the most important part, the two different messages 
very, very differently than, hey, you ready to get another spinal check? Or, yeah, you ready to come back in and start receiving care again? Uh, why? I'm good. Click. Now I'm not going back to them. When you get, when you reorient and realize that what you've been taught for the past 30 years doesn't apply to 2022 plus, and it's keeping you stuck at a collections level far below your potential for helping people getting their lives back, that's when everything changes. And you realize you can have your best collections ever with three day weekends, whether you're insurance, cash, or you wanna get the heck away from insurance and spending your weekends writing notes, and people will pay for what you do when you focus on helping people get back to their life rather than focus on getting people to agree with, accept, and understand chiropractic care. That's what we do in Patient Mastery. If you want a specific one-to-one -one gifted personal game plan for you to get to your next level of collections, like if you're stuck below that 20,000 mark a month, if you're stuck below that 40,000 a month mark, which is very common for chiropractors, if you're stuck below the 60,000 a month mark, most likely another 15 to 20,000 a month will make all the difference for you knocking out your student loan debts, having the lifestyle you want for your family and saving for the future. That's what we specialize in helping great chiropractors achieve by becoming the go-to chiropractor, loving practice and reducing a tremendous amount of unnecessary stress, thinking you have to do stuff that just doesn't work in 2022. 1985, 1995, you build this, you do this stupid maller, you, you, know, you say this, yeah, it worked. Not today. All right, so if you want more, comment below and, uh, or message me directly and we'll chat and see if it's fit for you. Otherwise, stay great, stay focused, and thank you for all the people you help get back 